this is Grace and welcome to my channel. I can't believe that we're almost done with July and I hope that you guys have been enjoying all of the videos that I have been sharing for this month. So about, I think it was two weeks ago that I shared a video or two videos rather of my latest purging and reorganizing of my scrapbook space and I have gotten a, a few comments on that so thank you so much that you have taken the time to comment on that. So um, the, the main reason that I did my reorganization is because that was phase one. I was trying to get my, my stuff kind of purged and organized so that um, the second phase would be actually moving my scrapbook room or my scrapbook supplies into a different room in our house because my son is going to take over this room, which I'm actually filming. And um, so... One of the things that have helped me to really, I would say, cut 50% off of whatever items that I had, that I was holding on to, was the book by um, KonMari, which is the, the magic uh, of tidying up. I will make sure to link that in the, in the description below if you're ever interested. But um, if you've ever heard of the KonMari method, basically the idea is to um, really go through your items and ask the question if it sparks joy. And um, it's geared more towards living a minimalist life. And sadly, I am not there yet. But I, it has really, reading the book and applying all the things that I've learned in the book have really helped me to um, just really cut down on all of the stuff that I have because there were some things that I was holding on to that was not sparking joy and it was not practical. So today's video, I'm going to share with you the five things that I have learned from that method or from that style of decluttering and purging and organizing and I hope that that will help you as you tackle your craft room. Now before I continue, I want to say that in the book, she mentions that you don't really start with like a hobby because there's so much more emotional connection to the supplies that you have. Um, but I didn't, I, I really, my intention to read it was really to work on my craft supplies and not my clothes and my, my shoes and all the other items in my home. Although, um, I actually did my clothes about maybe five days ago, and it has worked as well. It was super easy for me to tackle that. So if you are kind of hesitant to use that method in your scrapbook room or in your craft space, make sure that you try that in other areas of your home or your life first. Okay, so let's go on to the five things that I've learned. And I'm sorry if I'm going to go look down because I have a notebook here that um, I'm kind of referencing it to. Okay, so first lesson that I have learned is to touch everything that I own. And I did that. And that's one of the things that KonMari wanted us to do was touch everything and ask the question, does it spark joy? Well, I didn't just ask that question. I also asked two more questions. And that is, how many projects can I use this for? So if it's a supply that I can use over and over again, or even a paper, how many projects can I actually use this? And if the answer is only one, then that I don't really need to hold on to that because if I if I say I make it for one mini album and then that mini album is done, there's really no need for me to hold on to that item anymore because that was the only project that I had intentionally wanted to use it. So that was one of the things that I used to gauge if an item should stay or should go in my craft space. And then the third one was, is it easy to replace or to purchase again? And that was one of the things that have helped me as well because there were, um, in the beginning of my scrapbook journey, if I could say that, um, I used to go through a lot of those clearance aisles and get a lot of the, um, the sale items. And then I realized that at the end of the day, I don't really use them. I just grab them just because they were on sale. And so that's one of the things that I have realized that right now I'm holding on to a lot, um, the items that have a lot more value to them, a lot more purpose to them, and um, they're a higher price point. So those are the things that okay, I have So lesson number two that I've learned is that when, one of the things that KonMari wanted us to do was to 
gather all of the like items. So if we're talking about paper, every paper that I own, I have to gather them all up and then sort them at that time because she said that when you, you know, some, there are certain things, this doesn't really necessarily connect with scrapbooking because most of our stuff are in one area, but like say clothes, you know, sometimes we have clothes in boxes, sometimes in our closet, sometimes in our dressers. So when you're organizing one category, just gather them all up and then sort through there because sometimes we, we sort one and then we forget that we had another batch in another room and yeah, and so on and so forth. So what I did was I collected all of my like items together and I did realize that there were some items that I have that are double or that one one thing can actually work for two different things uh, so like say papers or stickers I collected them all and I went through them and I noticed that you know I had a lot of Valentine stickers or 4th of July stickers and I don't really when I document those kinds of memories, I don't necessarily make my page very themed. And so I don't need five 4th of July stickers. So I just save two of them and then put the three in, in like a pile to donate or pile to sell. So that is my lesson number two. Lesson number three for me is that I will keep items that do double duty. So that was one of the things that I have kind of learned for myself that I don't need to spend so much money in, in buying certain things that I, I can actually make those specific embellishments or or items, uh, accents with the things that I already have on hand. So I'm a very big fan of basic shapes when it comes to punches or to dice or even stamping. So those are the things that I save because they do double duty. They can, um, they can punch and then they uh, their, their shapes are very basic so I can use them on all sorts of um, projects and then another thing that does double duty for me is my sewing machine so I use it for sewing items of course you know sewing fabric and making clothes and all that stuff but then I also use my that specific sewing machine I use it for sewing onto my pages so that's the one that I kept I did have you know those little sewing machine that you can use specifically for, for paper but I got rid of that because I already have a big sewing machine. So that is lesson number three. Lesson number four for me is that once I have purged and I have um, got rid of all the things that I want to get rid of and then keep the items that I do want to stay in my scrapbook room, the um, thing that worked well for me as far as putting them back in the in, in the storage or in the shelf is that I need to store like items together and that has helped me a lot i don't know if you are the same kind of scrapper but i like to organize my stuff that all of them are together so for example all of my buttons are in the same area all of my ribbons are in the same area all of my um, stamps are in the same area and that just has that just helps me to um to know like if I wanted if I needed a stamp I know exactly where I'm going to go I don't have to go to three different areas just so I can find a specific stamp so that is lesson number four okay lesson number five for me is making sure that you label things as you go so the reason why I say that's a lesson because that was actually kind of a hard lesson that I have learned um, and that and the reason for that is because I was organizing my embellishments and my flowers in this um container and I walked away from it not labeling it and then later on maybe a couple of weeks later I was trying to find where I had put my acetate um, embellishments and I could not find them and then finally I went through this uh, little container that I have all of my embellishments and that's where they were and so if you are reorganizing make sure that you label as you go because you will forget where you had placed them because of you reorganizing things you probably will put your stamps in a different location or you know in my case embellishments in a different location than what you had put them before and so you will forget where you had put them so that's lesson number okay five. so lesson number six um the thing that i liked or appreciated with the conmari method is that she took into consideration those items that are rare or have emotional connection to us um, like pictures she said that that's one of the things that was um, important to 
to consider and I appreciated that because our scrapbooking items although they are just materials that they have some kind of an emotional connection to us especially to me because um, for starters there are certain papers that I had bought specifically for a certain um, documentation or certain event and so that has a connection to me and then there's also certain things that um, is connected because you know I saved all my money so that I can get this big thing or something to that effect so I appreciated that she take that in consideration so when you're looking through your scrapbook items or your supplies make sure that those rare or the items that have emotional connection to you you have to take that into consideration now we can go way overboard in that regard as far as like well everything has emotional connection but if you start with asking first if it sparks joy and if it's practical and um, does it serve its purpose and um will i will it be easy for me to replace it or to um to find it another thing well if you answer all those and you're still kind of worried then you could put that in a category of rare or emotional connection and she also said that if you have kind of like a maybe pile that put that in a pile and then like set it aside and then you know if you have not pulled that out of that maybe pile in a week then that means that you didn't really have a connection to it and that could um, easily go into the for sale or letting go so those are the items that i have learned in organizing my scrapbook room this time with um con mary method in mind and i hope that you guys have enjoyed this video if you have any questions just please leave it in the comment section below and i will make sure to try to link all of the items that i have said like the book um, i am also going to link the two videos that i have shared that shows my craft room tour and um, in the description below and as always thank you for stopping by and i will catch you guys later bye